Hello everyone, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today we are going to do an imaginary scene in two colors using dioxine purple and lemon yellow. I'm going to be doing this on a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua, 100% cotton, 140-pound cold press. I'm going to saturate this paper, get it nice and sopping wet, and then we'll start painting. I'm going to use an approach by um, contemporary tonalist Stuart Davies. It's also used by other um, tonalists and other oil painters where a mixture of a few colors is kind of thinned out with um, linseed oil or some other thinning medium and pushed, scraped, wiped, um, dabbed onto um, a canvas. But we'll be doing it with watercolor. So I think we are pretty good and we'll get started. Now, this color combination, I played around with in the past. I think I have one video up, probably from about a year ago. It's been quite some time since playing with the two of them. But the mixture was really surprising. Um, I, oh, that's weird. This tube is fresh. So this is, or a tube that I haven't used yet. And I guess I just don't use new tubes that much. <laughs> and um, it seems like it was pure uh, gum Arabic that came out, or whatever binder is used in the uh, cotton. Anywho, where was I? Yeah, so this combination has a really surprising result. And I think you'll enjoy it. Hopefully we won't catch any of that other pigment up on the palette. This is my experimental palette. Colors that just haven't made the regular one. Right. Mixing this up. And I'm going to feed wet and wet, create my imaginary scene. Now I know it's going to be a landscape. I'm thinking, how do I want to build it? Let's bring up a side here. It's okay to splatter and splash. I'm going to push my tonal uh, values across the top. I'll wipe back if need be. Since my paper is saturating water, uh, getting saturated, I'm pushing down the binder clip, pressing down the paper, and that's helping stretch it out. Now, I mentioned that I'm using 100% cotton. It's, I think it really holds up well uh, to this approach. But there are people that use the Fabriano Studio I tried it in the beginning. I wasn't too much of a fan of it, but there's people that really enjoy it and use it for the fast and loose painting. So if you don't want to dive into 100% cotton, you can check that out. I'm not sure if Joe Menza is still using that paper. I believe David Usher uses it or has used it. Um, Stephen Cronin, I think Matthew Clemens is still using that paper. It's all the people that um, follow the Hake brush painting or the Ron Ranson painting approach. Not sure what paper Lois Davidson has been using. I think she's been using um, a 90 pound paper though and maybe Bockingford. I remember a year or two ago, I think she accidentally ordered some hot press 90 pound paper. So a uh, 90 pound paper is gonna be thinner and um, more prone to buckling. 
if you could get your hands on a 300 pound paper that'd be great 300 pound paper is um, heavy and resistant to buckling I think if you were to go with a large size painting 300 pound paper would be the way to go but um, I think price wise it's about double the price of uh, a 140 pound paper but if you're also going to like so I guess that's what we're going to talk about this painting while I'm just playing around I'm using the paper towel to lift up um, areas and pull out the water and create highlights and um, textural varieties there. And I'm trying not to repeat the same shape so I don't get that stamping effect. But um, to use a phrase by Mr. Stuart Davies that I had mentioned earlier, it gives you the illusion of detail. Rather than sitting there and painting every single small aspect of it. And as you pull up the water in those spots, you obviously remove the moisture and you'll change the effect that'll happen as you pass over it or as the paint dries in that spot. But you can come back in and add more water if you want. I pulled the water out completely here to let that highlight really stand out at the end. So hopefully you can see the interesting color combination that's given by this um, purple and yellow, which I would have never thought. I really would have thought it would mix a brown, which it does give us a little bit of that aspect, but I would say it's pinkish and I don't know why. So I started talking about paper and I was going to say, if you're somebody who is very diligent and meticulous with your paintings, um, 300 pound paper might be something to look into where if you're spending quite some time on it, it may be worth the price. Uh, this paper right here, I buy it in sheets of 10. And this is a 22 by 30 is the sheet size, I believe. That's a standard size, 22 inches by 30 inches. I believe they call it Imperial in um, in the UK or Europe. Let me know in the comments what they call it in uh, the European countries, that size. And then I quarter it. I fold it in half, tear it, fold it in half again, and I get four sheets out of it. So essentially, it's a dollar a painting, which really isn't too bad. I believe if you go the studio, Fabriano studio route, they'll be about um, 50 cents a painting for about the same size. If you go arches, which isn't pronounced arches, it's arch, it's a French word, I believe. Um, those sheets are about six, probably six, seven dollars. So you're a dollar fifty a sheet there. Um, and then if you're 300 pounds, sorry, a dollar fifty a painting this size for the paper. Once you tear up the arches, if you buy it from sheets, if you buy pads or blocks, it's going to be much more expensive, um, per painting. For some reason, I guess having it in that easier access form, uh, blocks, it's more expensive, obviously. But I have noticed uh, one gentleman, I think about a year ago, we were talking about paper prices, and he had said in the comments he was thinking about buying um, big rolls of watercolor paper and looking it up price wise. And I did the calculations, and rolls of water paper did not come out cheaper than sheets of watercolor paper. So a 
22 by 30 is the cheapest route size wise unless there's some sort of deal or special running on the other ones taking the number one rigger and I'm using this mixture to paint wet and wet um, branches usually I'm kind of just putting vertical trunks in and letting it soften up but I feel like this is more mid-ground so this will be a little bit more uh, feel to them even though they'll soften and dry Now, other things to mention in regards to paper, you'll want to see how it handles up to scraping, if that's your thing, to scrubbing back, um, to masking fluid. So if you have different techniques that you utilize, look into that paper and see if um, there's any reviews and if they mention the, uh, the paper in that regard. I always say I had I think I started out maybe just Hobby Lobby brand. I uh, quickly went to Fabriano Studio and then Arches and Canson. Then I had bought a plethora of different paper from uh, Blick. If you order, I think, 10 sheets, you'll, uh, you won't get the extra charge due to the size and it could be a mixture of things and let you try it out and I tried I think it's Fabriano Artistico um, Windsor Newton and some others and this paper is the one I really enjoyed it relaxed flat it handled well um, when you really think about it in hindsight trying out different paper. I did put a lot of uh, monetary investment into it. But I think it's a stage that most watercolorists might hit, at least trying different paper. Um, a local budding artist who has become a buddy of mine, um, he was asking about the Starts with an H. Um, I think it was Cheap Joe's Art Supply, their name brand or their store brand, but I had never tried it. So if you know the one that I'm talking about, uh, it's not like the super expensive European one that starts with an H. I think there's some other one that starts with an H. <laughs> I'm being very <laughs> difficult right now trying to think of that. But if you're watching and you know the paper I'm talking about and you tried it, let me know what you think in the comments below. So I'm using this to create uh, different edges, different um, textural uh, shapes, uh, tonal values, just building up. The one negative to this approach is that we do wind up using quite a bit of pigment but if you're using Cotman brand if you're using da vinci brand if you're using uh, van gogh brand all of those are really uh priced good when i mentioned brands in the previous video um people in europe had mentioned the white knights brand and I have not found that yet, but they were saying that they offer a large amount, a just a lot of different tubes and pigments. So if anybody wants to ever send any to America for me to try, let me know. I would love to try different brands. So, let me know in the comments below what brand you prefer. Also, feel free to share whatever paper you prefer and, um, and why.
mine's a mixture of the economy and like the economic value, what you get for your dollar and how well it handles. And uh, Percy is scratching at the door. So let me uh, pause for a second and say hi to my beautiful kitten. So here is Percy Poop, Persephone. She's about a year and a half old and she loves her daddy and she loves knocking at the door when I'm painting. And I say hi to everybody, Percy. You had enough? All right, I'm gonna send you back in the living room. So hopefully that satisfied uh, Percy's urge to be on the big screen. I could not ask for a better cat. Don't let the other cats hear you say that though. Every cat is the best cat. Every dog is the best dog. So I'm just playing around in here. We might do some scraping and scratching. We have a relatively simple S-shaped composition. Building up the foreground may help some. It's almost pure purple right there. I think we might be at a point where we can look at doing a dry off. Let's get a little bit of light texture on this foliage and then we'll do our dry off. We can see how this scrapes if we want. Now this is the sharp edge going into it. And in regards to cards, you can use a credit card, a hotel card, a ID card, anything old like that. And you might want to save your ID cards in a memory box or something like that. But, you know, you can use anything on hand. Using the cut edge, but you could also take the rounded edge to push some wider marks. Less likely to backfill. And when I say backfill, the water and pigment around it fills back in and creates uh, dark lines. You could use the whole flat and pull out some rocks. This is a technique that's used a lot by some of the awesome painters that I mentioned earlier. And tomorrow or after this, I'm gonna have to make this cat, this room cat friendly again because, oh Lord, they are just wanting to get in here so bad. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, they just, I don't know if they, love hanging out in here or like I said Percy loves me you know she's I'm her dad or whether or not they just want to be in the room that they can't be in just so many projects in the works so this uh, flatter wider scrape it is easy to overdo scraping Let's um, let's do some foreground trees that are wide. Do a gra uh, something drastic there. I had that widening take place because it was um, buckling, and I was I guess pushing a ridge. But maybe try to prevent that from happening again. And we'll come back over these trees. 
with a darker foliage and texture, but we'll kind of get the idea now. Some people have been producing um, some just beautiful uh, birch trees. I need to start including those in my watercolor painting. Do we want to pull out any more? I think we'll darken here, bring some darker foliage. Let's just do a thinner coming off the side. Okay, I think now would be a great time to pause and do a dry off. I think we're dried off enough it does seem like we did have some tonal shifting taking place, meaning it lightened up in value as it dried, but it wasn't too bad. It was anticipated. So now we'll go in with less water, more pigment, and get our texture and variety. This is what really is going to make the scene pop and come together. It helps create a sense of depth, interest, and variety. Along that edge, just using the hake for the Illusion of grass. The one issue with um, this stage potentially is uh, simply that um, same monochromatic or the same color happening repeated. So I'm going to try to vary it by pushing some more lemon yellow. And then pushing more purple. Let's just grab some straight purple, see how that looks. There we go. Grab some yellow. And I'm going to switch to the, do I have the number four rigger out? No, it's disappeared. We'll use the number one and add a little bit of depth to what we had scraped out. I wonder where the number one is. Sorry, number four is. I think somebody should post one of the show pictures of your art space. That's a good uh, thing to mention down below. How's your art space looking? Is it currently super messy? Super clean? Do you prefer to keep it clean, but it got super messy? Or are you more creative when it's all a little over the place? I just really love this color combination. I wonder what a good third color would be. I did really enjoy adding that raw umber to different two colored paintings. This one might benefit from it as well. I wouldn't be surprised if you can look at those yellows in there and just think about how that would push it just slightly different. Just using that purple as a dark. I'm 
Let's pause and take a look and do a dry off. I think uh, time wise, we're at 25 minutes, so let's stop it here. We'll sign the painting and I'll show you what it looks like underneath the mat. Um, you are always welcome to follow along with anything on this channel. And I would love to see your results. Feel free to hit me up on social media and send me um, pictures of what you wind up doing. I'd love to see that or tagging me or whatever. Uh, that being said, you are more than welcome to sign it with your own name um, to sell anything you do when you follow this uh, channel. I want you all to be successful, to have fun. And we had talked about the different prices of paper. And I want you guys to be able to afford some interesting paper. Please like, subscribe, follow. And if you want to support this channel, I have uh, different links down below. So here's our final result. Uh, you can see the purple right there, how we really get that darkness. I think that we could add to it by accentuating these spots. Might do some off-camera work, but um, this is just a winning color combination. It's just really fun. So have a go at it. Y'all take care, and I'll talk to y'all soon.